What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name's Chris. I'm going to be your host for today, and today is day three of our Barrel Bourbon Week. Last week was Bardstown Bourbon Week. Next week is going to be Maker's Mark Week. We have the BEP, the Wood Finishing Series from Maker's Mark. We're going to compare that to some other Wood Finishing Series that we already have. The week after that, we are hopefully interviewing Dixon Deadman live here on Bourbon of the Week. We have the Phoenix Blend. We just got the Innkeepers Blend, so that's going to be 2XO Week. But today, let's find out which one of these batches is better, Barrel 33, Barrel Batch number 34. We're going to pour these up and I got to know in the comment section below if you've had both of these which one do you like better let's try this out so we're going to use our great whiskey challenge tasting kit so we are doing this blind this is a which is going into glass a straight up to the pour line let's make sure we got that right a little low a little more and then batch number 34 which is tag b going into glass b let's just double check Boom. Move these bottles over here, and then we'll get to everybody's favorite part. Let's mix these up so we don't know which one's which. So here we go, batch 33 versus batch 34. I gotta be honest with you, I have no idea who is going to win this. This is really a toss up. Both of these batches were fantastic coming out of Barrel Bourbon, but everybody knows before we get started on all of that, time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. one of them. So I have obviously reviewed both of these bottles already. Batch 34 more recently, obviously, than Batch 33. This was a little while ago, but let's talk about these bottles real quick. Batch 33, bottle number 1,444. This says aged five years, but there is five, six, seven, as well as nine-year-old whiskey in that. Compare that to Batch 34. This is bottle 30,512, and it says six years, but there's six, eight, 10, as well as 15-year-old whiskey in this. So we're really going to put ourselves to the test if we can get those ages when it comes to these particular glasses, but let's keep sipping these and see which one we like better. Time for glass number two. These are both just so good. So both of these bottles here say that they're sourced from three different locations, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Indiana. We're going to assume that Indiana is MGP or Ross and Squibb, whatever you want to call it. We're also now, thanks to Sugar Kitty, if you're watching this, thank you for this information, going to assume that the stuff coming from Tennessee is Dickel. Does that mean that you're going to get Dickel notes in this and that vitamin taste that everybody says they hate? I don't personally get it, so make sure you still pick up these batches. Fantastic whiskey right here. Then we have Kentucky. I have no idea where they're getting this from Kentucky. The big thing about this is the blending process that goes into these two bottles and let's talk about that real quick so barrel number 33 right here is going with high rye and high corn mash bills and they're blending those together and i think they do it perfectly the high corn is going to give you those vanillas those toffees those caramels while the high rye is going to give you a little bit of that spice that cinnamon that allspice that black pepper mix that with some older whiskey again you have nine year whiskey in that you're going to get a little bit of that oak influence without the big tannins on that which i think is very important especially for my palate but the other bottle is completely different so i'm going to see if we can get those different tasting notes off these two glasses right here they tell us here for batch 34 that the eight-year-old whiskey in this is supposed to give us hazelnuts mixed with cherries. Then they actually do still add some high corn mash bills, which is going to give us some apricot as well as some browned butter. Mix that for a little bit, let it mingle with those two barrels, and then you're going to add the 10 and 15-year-old whiskey in this, which again is going to give you that age without bringing too much tannin involved in this. So both of these glasses should be low on the tannins, but high on different flavor profiles. And I don't really know which one's which at this point. I remember getting a cola note, a cherry cola note, note specifically off of batch 34. Let's see if we can pick that up. I don't know if I really get it there or not, but we're going to keep drinking these. These are obviously very close in proof, 114.62 proof and 116.6 proof. So we're not going to get too much difference when it comes to the proof on these two glasses, but I will say they don't taste the same, which is fantastic because for both of these to be so good, so differently blended and so many different flavors in these for one batch apart, it's absolutely amazing what barrel can do with the different barrels that they get. Now, somebody actually just recently commented on an old Forrester blind tasting video I did a long time ago, and they said, dude, you did this completely wrong. You're out here trying to guess which one's which. It has nothing to do with which one's which. It just has to do with which flavor profile you like better. So for today, I'm not going to try and figure out which one's batch 34 and which one's batch 33. I'm just going to tell you the flavor profiles I get and at the end, which one I like the best. Let's keep sipping these. The only thing I hate about blinds is you never know how much whiskey you really need. 
If you haven't seen me do blinds before, basically the reason I close my eyes and cover the bottom, I don't want you to think that I'm looking in the camera or a mirror or a reflection or anything like that. For my camera, I use a phone, so I actually can't see what I'm looking at, so I just kind of hope I'm in frame and everything like that, but there's no way I can see what's on the bottom of this glass, but let's keep sipping this and see which one we like the best. I'm just going to go back and forth here real quick. There's a hair on that one. Probably my dog. I mean, maybe, just maybe, and we're splitting hairs here, but this glass right here seems a little bit more accentuated with that flavor profile. Obviously, neither of these are watered down. They're both at cash strength, but this one just seems a little bit more mute compared to this one, and that's all we're doing is comparing these to each other. When I use words like watered down or mute, that just means compared to another cash strength whiskey, which is very similar to the one that we're trying. Neither of these are bad. They're both fantastic, but we kind of have to nitpick here at this point when you have two whiskeys that are this good to see which one we like the best. I'm going back again. So next to each other, this glass right here, a little bit more predominant with those flavors, and the finish on this one is just a lot longer. For this glass right here, you drink it, the flavors are good, but then it's gone. This glass right here, it lingers, it sticks around on the tongue a little bit. This one seems a little bit more youthful as well, but I don't know if that's because it's the younger whiskey, and that's what's kind of throwing me off here. One of these has 10 to 15 year old whiskey in it. One of these, the oldest in it is nine. I'm not sure which one that is, but I will say this one seems a little bit more youthful, but that could just be because maybe it's the five year that's standing out to me or the six year that's standing out to me. And this one's just giving me a little bit more. But this glass right here, as of right now, is the early favorite. And I say early as if we're not almost finished. I gotta say, both of these, the rye spice on both of these is so good. That cinnamon, that allspice is just so good. It's not overwhelming. It's not super spicy. It just hits the back of that palate so nicely after the sweetness on the front of both of these. I love these bottles. There's a smoothness to this glass that I absolutely love, like a buttery finish, velvety almost, while this glass is a little bit more dense with the finish, but it's so much longer. I don't know which one of these I like better. At this point, we're just kind of tossing it up in the air. This one, the finish is longer, the flavors are a little bit more predominant, but this one right here is just so good with the flavors that you do get, so well-rounded, so well-balanced. I gotta say, this one's gonna be tough, but cheers, let's finish them. Oh my God, like that is so good. So good. Salute. Here's the deal and this is how we're gonna end things. No matter which one of these bottles you see on the shelf, you should pull the trigger. If they're 85 to $90 and you see them on the shelves, definitely pick them up. I will be looking for backups of both of these bottles because there's no reason that you shouldn't have one of these sitting on your shelf at all times. The worst thing about barrel bourbon is the fact that once one of those batches is gone, it's gone forever. Joe Beatrice understands that. That's why he keeps putting out great product after great product. And two of these bottles right here are exactly that great products. But I have to pick a winner and tonight, I think you knew I was gonna go with this one right here. It's not that this one's bad. It's not anything wrong with this one. This one just stands out a little bit ahead of this glass over here. So that's gonna be our winner, but we gotta find out what one it is. Drum roll, please. I'm kind of nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous. No matter which one it is, it's the right answer. But let's see in first place tonight is going to be Glass A, which is barrel number 33, batch number 33. That right there is a fantastic batch. Even with the younger whiskey in that, you still get so many good flavor profiles. You still get the perfect amount of oak on the end of it. Again, batch 34, absolutely something that you need to have in your collection. Very happy to have a bottle of it in mind. Both of these, neither one you could go wrong with. Listen, I could do this 10 times in a row and 50% of the time I would pick batch 33, 50% of the time I would pick batch 34. Again, if you have an opportunity, make sure you pick up either one of these bottles. You will not be disappointed. But in the meantime, make sure you check me out on Instagram. Go click that follow button over there. We're trying to get to 10,000 followers on Instagram and we're pretty damn close. Check out our Patreon page, that link in the description below. Check out our Discord, come chat with us 24 seven. We have a lot of fun just in Discord. Please don't drink and drive, always drink responsibly and stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Go Sixers. You gotta have barrel.